In this video, I'll be demonstrating the use of superposition for the linear static analysis of this loaded plate. Full details of this exercise are on page 372 of the PDF linked in the video description below. I'll first begin by starting Patran here. Start my new Patron database. I'll call this one problem 11. The units for this example are in inches, pounds, and PSI. Now, according to the example, I am to define three subcases that ultimately add up to the actual vertical displacement. So back in Patron, I need to define uh, the three subcases. So I'll hit OK here on the right. I'll define a curve, or before that, I'll define my coordinate system using the three-point method. This is a cylindrical coordinate system. I'll leave the defaults here, and after I hit Apply, you'll see my new coordinate system here. I'll create a curve using the line by XYZ method. So from the origin, this first curve is to have a length of 4. And you can click apply or hit enter. Then I'll define another curve that starts at this point, point 2. And I'll have the same length of 4 inches. See my second curve here. Next thing I want to do is define or create my surface by rotating these two curves about the y-axis here. or not the wax, the z-axis. So to do that, go to the surfaces revolve method. Here for axis, I want to do this about the, well, the third. So axis three of coordinate system zero. My total angle of rotation is 90 degrees, and once I select these two curves, it creates the two surfaces. And this is a, and this is subcase A. Now I have to define subcase B and C. So to define this geometry, under transform I click surface. Here I want to rotate the two surfaces. So make sure that says rotate. My rotation angle will be 120 degrees, and my repeat count will be two. So after I select these two surfaces, and since I have auto execute on here, as soon as I'm finishing selecting surfaces, it automatically creates the other surfaces. And here I've accidentally selected the surface too, and I don't need that. So I can either undo it or either I can undo that action and only select this surface uh, as shown here. Or what I can do is if I go to geometry actions, delete, I can delete the surface if I've accidentally created it. Here, let me undo that. So now that I have my surfaces defined for subcases A, B, and C, I can define my materials by going to the Properties tab. Here under Isotropic, the material name would just be Matt. Under Input Properties, I have a Young's Modulus of E7 PSI and a Poisson Ratio of 0.33. Click OK and hit Apply to create this material. Now to assign the material to the surfaces, I have to go to 2D properties and, hit it and select shell. For property set name, call it prop. For my input properties, select this material that we just created. For your thickness, type in a value of 0.25 inches. Hit OK. For your application region, we wish to apply this to all the surfaces. So you can either drag and select surfaces 1 through 4, or you can hit pick all and it'll select all the surfaces. Click add, OK, and hit apply. 
After you've done this, we'll define our boundary conditions by going to this tab. Under Displacement Constraint, I'll call this first one Edge Constraint. For my input data, I'll prevent translation in the x, y, and z direction. For my analysis coordinate frame, make sure to pick this coordinate system here in the middle. It's the cylindrical coordinate system and it's called chord 1. Click OK for your application region. Make sure you only have curves selected here so you can only pick curves at this first one and at these other two ones. Click OK and hit apply. From the next one, I'll call it symmetry constraint. From my input data, I'll prevent translation in the Y. So open, comma, zero, comma, then close it. And I'll prevent rotations about the X. So open, zero, comma, leave a blank there, comma, zero, then close it. You'll use the same analysis coordinate frame. Hit OK for your application region. Select this curve and every other curve you see me select here. You'll notice they turn orange when you drop them in this box here. Click Add, OK, and Apply. And one last one, a point constraint for my input data. I'll prevent translation in the X, the Y, not the Z, so comma, blank, close. And I'll prevent rotations about the X, about the Y, and about the Z. You use the same analysis coordinate frame as before, chord 1, for your application region. Just pick the point icon here and select this middle point, add it. Hit OK and apply. Now it's time to define our loads. Here under element uniform for subcase A, hit pressure. Call this pressure and select the element type 2D. For your input data, type in 50 PSI. Click OK and for your application region, select the surface icon here. So you only surf select surfaces 2 and surface 1. Hit OK and apply. Now I need to make a shear constraint or load here. Under element uniform, hit distributed load again. For your new set name, type in V. For your element type, type in 2D. For input data, your load is as follows. Open 0, 0, 100. And you will leave that blank. Hit OK for your application region, select this edge here. Add it, OK and apply. We'll create a new distributed load called M for moment, and this would define the load for subcase C. And this would be the load for subcase B here. So for M, for your input data, you can just leave that blank. Here I will define a value of uh, 500, 0, 0. Click OK for your application region, select this curve, add it, OK and apply. And now you, you can see my loads and boundary conditions here. I'll go ahead and mesh this. Before that I have to define a few mesh seeds, so click under mesh seeds uniform. I wish to define a requirement that says I need six elements through this curve. And I'll select this curve and every other one you see me pick. To make this easier on us, you can use the sweep icon or reset graphics here to remove the markers. And simply hit each curve you see me select. Once I'm done defining these seeds, I can go to the meshes icon here for surface and make sure it says quad, quad four here. I'll mesh this surface, this one and this one, and hit apply. 
Next, I'll switch the element shape to Crea here. I'll select this surface, surface one, and I'll hit apply. So now I've defined meshes for each surface. One important thing to note is that I'm going to go to display and show you my finite elements here. If I select edges here and hit apply, clean this up. And I'll hide my geometry by clicking this icon here. And notice that right now the mesh is not one entire thing here. You'll notice it's actually two separate bodies. So let me show you the mesh. So visually it looks like it's all one continuous mesh where this these elements are linked to these elements here, but in reality when I switch to edges here, there's actually a divider here indicating they are separate meshes and I need to go ahead and crack this. If I go back to the meshing tab and click equivalence and click apply, I'll go ahead and remove the duplicate nodes that were here before. So now what I have in effect is a fully linked mesh. So let me switch it back to faces and hit apply. So now these elements are fully linked to these elements after I've equivalenced. And the way I got to this fem attributes form is I went to display finite elements. I'll go ahead and close this. And one last thing before I analyze this. I turn on the model tree and view my boundary conditions. Let me display my geometry. It looks as if the boundary conditions have been applied to just these few nodes here. But if I go to display load BC element props and I turn on show on fem only and hit apply and then I turn off and on my boundary conditions. You see the true application of the boundary conditions where when I've defined them, I've defined them to the various curves and surfaces. And when I have this option on show on fem only, I see an actual representation of how the loads are applied at the nodes. So let me uncheck this and hit apply. And let me turn them off and on again and you'll see that they're back to the original way. To analyze this, go to the analysis tab, analyze entire model. Make sure you're in this form and hit apply. Here I've received a message saying that the coordinate system used for the nodes is different from the coordinate system used for the boundary conditions. So I have to go ahead and crack this. Click no here, go back to the meshing tab, scroll up to this form and under action, go to show node location and simply select a few nodes and uh, I'll show you what I'm referring to. So here for these nodes I see that the reference and analysis coordinate system are using the global system which would be this one here, XYZ here. I have to go ahead and correct this so go to action modify Object is node, method is edit, check analysis and reference. Make sure you have quarter one for both of these. And for your node list, simply pick all the nodes and hit apply. And you get feedback here to saying that the operation has been performed. And this time when you go back to show, node location, and you pick a few nodes, you see that the reference and analysis coordinate system are the cylindrical ones. Hit cancel here, go back to analysis, click analyze entire model, and click apply to reanalyze this. Hit a yes here to replace the wolf files you made. You'll notice that message doesn't come up again. Go to access results xdb. Hit apply to import, go to results, and here let me hide the markers. 
here I'll use the cursor tool and I'm basically interested in the vertical displacements. So I've selected this subcase. I'll scroll down to translational displacements and view the Z component. When I hit apply, this new window pops up and I simply pick the nodes that I want to view the results for. And here I look at the values and I can already tell they are not correct. I'll have to go ahead and uh, look through the various values I've defined for the example and see where I've misplaced the value. So here I have a Poisson ratio of 0.22 and it actually should be 0.33. Hit OK here and apply. And again, the way to do that is uh, you right click and modify. Simply change it, OK, and hit apply. Let me make sure I've defined the property properly. So I'm using that material and the thickness is correct. Hit OK and apply. I can tell I've defined my boundary conditions properly. And you'll notice that the CID here equals 1, which means it's using this coordinate system in the middle. And in the middle, I defined that boundary condition correctly. The pressure is correct, and my distributed loads appear correct. So I have a feeling it was that Poisson value that was incorrect. Go to Analysis, click Analyze Entire Model, and hit Apply. Override your previous files. Once that's done, go back to XDB, import these results. Go to the results tab, click cursor, click translational displacements and view the Z component, hit apply. And for subcase A, I get a value of negative 0.617. For subcase B, I get a value of 0.696 and for subcase C I get a value of negative nine or negative 0 0.960 inches. And let me open Excel real quick. And let me do the addition real quick. I'm gonna add these up. I get a value of negative 0.88 inches, and when I compare this to the value I should get, I do get negative 0.88 inches. Um, one last thing you can review is under Quick Plot, go and click Fringe. Scroll down here under French result and view your stress tensor. And here what you could do is view your radio component of stresses. Here what I have to do is I may have to actually transform these. So here under result plots, click fringe, select stress tensor like before, the quantity is X component. Here under coordinate transformation, click CID hit and select this coordinate system chord 1 and hit apply. And now uh, you can view the radial stresses. You can view your hoop stresses too by switching to the Y component. Clean this up. Save your file and this concludes this example.